So this is um interesting jazz and dash and bash. Pretty much um, what's going on here. We have um, alliances, a, a long-standing alliances, but Americans finally want to pay attention. They think they know everything all of a sudden. But um, but you know, Russia and China are pretty much right next to each other. They share a four thousand, almost a four thousand kilometer border along each other. It's almost like, uh, and even even when like a simpleton, like this geopolitical kind of like analogy. Uh, you know, Russia is like China's Canada. Um, <laughs> so, like, <laughs> you want the simple ass. <laughs> so, uh, so fucking violent, rude ass Canada. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 this Canada happenstance is invading Ukraine and, and bombing hospitals and shopping malls. And, um, so, so, why is this happening? Why is it all of a sudden like the, uh, the West can't say shit about it? And like, everyone is like saying, fuck you, America. You guys are hypocrites. We can do whatever the fuck we want. So, this stuck out to me. This will. This um, this um, kind of uh, this is one of the Ministry of Foreign Ministers, Foreign Affairs, um, spokesperson in China, and he gave this really like uh, bold and cynical speech about why Americans can't say shit about Russia and Ukraine right now. Mm. The more the U.S. repeats lies related to Xinjiang, the more it exposes its hypocrisy in claiming to be a defender of human rights. As millions of Native Americans died as a result of genocide, the U.S. should sincerely repent for its crimes rather than smear and attack others. As nearly one million people have lost their lives to COVID-19, over 40,000 people fall victim to gun, gun violence every year, and hundreds of thousands of people suffer from racial discrimination in the U.S., the country should I mean, deep China really shouldn't be talking, but, you know. <laughs> rather than point fingers at others. As U.S. waged wars in Iraq, Syria, Afghanistan, and other places have caused 330,000 civilian deaths and made over 26 million people refugees, the U.S. should sincerely beseech the international community to forgive it, rather than style itself as a lecturer on human rights in a condescending manner. We urge the U.S. to face squarely and address its own systemic and persisting human rights issues Stop making prescription for others while it's, it, it's sick itself. And more importantly, stop undermining human rights in other countries in the name of defending it. If the U.S. can change its old habit of lecturing others on human rights, the human rights situation in the world will be much better. So China's pretty much, your, your breath smells, you don't iron your shirts, your fucking shoes are fucked up, you have no right to tell us how to dress or anything like that. <laughs> you know, like, you know, so it's like, okay, so... No. <laughs> Basically, if you live in a glass house, <laughs> don't shoot intercontinental ballistic missiles. <laughs> That's, That's basically what they're saying. And, and the thing happening. is, again, right you know, and, and the thing is, it, it you know, the first thing I came, you know, thought about was, you know, the Uyghur Muslims, right? Yeah, it's and it, it, and it's, it's like they, you, you can't talk. But then when you think about what China has done. And you compare it to what the U.S. has done, you know, China is pretty benevolent by comparison. Yeah, I mean, the whole structure of this country was founded on the genocide of the natives and then building on the blood, the bloody grounds of a of a nation you stole and then using black slave labor to build on top of it. Yeah. And you call yourself the land of the free. Yeah, so so it's crazy to me that you know this is why we're in this awkward situation where like you know America has no moral authority in this horrible situation. Horrible stuff was happening. I mean, they, I mean, there. I saw this one segment when this guy is walking to a cafe, who's hanging out in the cafe in Kiev, and next thing you know, there's like bodies underneath like a fucking because it got it got shelled. So next thing you know, a whole bunch of people are dead, and they can't get the bodies yet because they're buried underneath. They have tons of concrete in this cafe. This was happening in Ukraine. Those are not military people. There wasn't even people fighting. It was just like random people in the cafe. Um, so, but the fact that the United States, we we have we we've, we've done that over and over again. And yeah, every single time good. a black town <laughs> starts to prosper a little bit too much, they end up under a pile of rubble. <laughs> so like. So I want to. I just want to fast forward to like the modern stuff. Or they when, come, or, or the state. The state's like, hey, we can't firebomb the place, so we'll have the state comptroller take over all of the uh, financial 
uh, transactions that come through because, you know, we can't have those darkies doing too well for too long. You know, get behind the darkies and then when they do good, get in front of them. Yep. So, <laughs> so, yep. So, yeah. So when the bullets are flying, get behind them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so I want to post up this recent report. Because like the, the Human Rights Watch has, you know, I don't know people heard of the Human Rights Watch. They have a whole world report. The United States has like a whole list of things from foreign policy, the drug policy, the rights of non-citizens. We just had a situation where Border Patrol, you can argue about whether it was a red or his rings or like or, or a long they certainly twizzler, was or not a long twizzler, rolling whatever. out the red carpet. That's, <laughs> not, that's what that's not what was happening. <laughs> Oh, like voting rights to the right to education, which is you know, obviously um, education is a huge poverty problem. levels, uh, the way that uh, representatives of the government treat uh, people of certain races. National security, uh, you had like pretty much like, you know, NYPD being fake Muslims and hanging out at the mosque. People don't try to forget that. You had a uh, foreign policy, which the Chinese just dug into in a speech. But what I'm going to focus on today is a recent report that came out about the crisis of low wages, which like st- which uh, people don't realize what that causes, what ripple effects it has in society when you have low wages. So we're going to focus on this recent report. Not not it's not time. I guess it's doomsday. I don't know, but whatever you want to think of it. So this new report came out from Oxfam, and Oxfam is the place that you know that you go to when like people are starving in Central Africa, and like you read a report about it. So I think it's just a red flag that the fact the United States has a, a report from Oxfam. Um, so the, cr- the crisis of low wages in the U.S., new, new research reveals that nearly a third of all workers in the U.S. earn under $15 an hour. So I, I want to show you this stat. I want to jump to the stat right away, this crazy stat. While 26% of white workers earn less than $15, 46% of Hispanic Latino workers do, and 47% of black workers do. That's more than half of the black workers, nearly half of black workers in this country make fifteen not less than fifteen dollars an hour. That is a big, big number within that population. Um so so you want to talk about crime, you want to talk about mental illness, you want to talk about um all the disparate health disparities. You can look at people not getting paid enough money to live. Um that's pretty much foundation of that in a lot of ways. So um and then another factor in this report. The vast majority of workers earning less than $15 an hour are not teenagers. I like how <laughs> they put in all caps. Not, please, stop saying that shit. Like, you know. Yeah, because the first thing they want to say is, oh, those are supposed to just be entry-level jobs for kids. Like, no. Uh, we have something called child labor laws. <laughs> and a lot of these establishments that you're saying, you know, they're supposed to just be for kids starting out. You know, they uh, they're open much later than when the kids are allowed to work. So it, please, please uh, cut the bullshit on that. And this crazy stat is 89 percent are age 20, 89 percent. That is so when people say, oh, it's just for teenagers, they're, they're just they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. And you have 89 percentile stat of people older than 20 working. No wait, less oh, than and in wage. affluent families, uh, very few of them have their kids working those jobs. <laughs> right. So you, uh, no matter how you slice it, you believe that those jobs are for poor people. So I want to pull up. So this is a really extensive report. And I'm going to pull up this next thing. as one thing about the crisis of low wages. Who earns less than $15 an hour in the U.S. in 2022? More than 50 million workers are struggling to get by. How low wage impact black workers? Um, <clears throat> so it says right here, the minimum wage has been stuck at $7.25 an hour for 13 years. This is this is a shame. This is such a shame. Um, and then you want to go addition. Federal law permits several types of even lower sub minimum. We have we have sub minimum wages. There's a term of sub minimum wages. What that even means? It's like it's being naked, working for free somewhere. Yeah. Uh, what, what that means is, uh, if an employer has the opportunity to pay you less, they will. Because that's their job is to try to keep your prosperity down as much as possible. So it's not about how hard you work or how many hours you put in. It is their fiduciary, it is their fiduciary duty to make sure that you get the absolute least amount for your labor. That's their job. 
So, so this is crazy to me. So, so almost 31% of the workforce owns less than 15 dollars an hour in the U.S. in 2022. So that's the thing. Um, when they say these numbers, at least look at these numbers. Okay, one person is making $15 an hour. You have to realize that one person might be supporting a grandmother who's not working, that one person might have two kids, and one person might have a, a wife. So when you say one worker makes $15 an hour, you have to think of it as in terms of a household. Um, so so that so that, is even, that's, that number is even larger than the amount of people who, who are living off of $15 an hour. You know what I'm saying? Um, so... And we're not even talking about their kids because, they, you know, the, some of these people have kids. Also, some of these people who are doing it the so-called right way, waiting until they have the economic situation to be able to have children. You know, that's part of the reason why the birth rate is below replacement in this country. People don't think that they have the money to be able to feed their kids. You're going to have people go their entire lives with no offspring, yeah. nobody to carry yeah. on the legacy. Yeah, I mean, you have his, the stat right here. It says that um, uh, pretty much black women are even more disproportionately represented in low wage jobs. While 25 percent of working men earn less than fifteen dollars an hour, forty percent of working women earn less than fifteen dollars. That's half of working women of color earn less than fifteen dollars an hour. In twenty five states, at least sixty percent of working women, working women, that includes Hispanic women, black women, brown women, earn less than Fifteen dollars an hour, so sixty percent. That is a large number. So when people say, "Oh, why there's no kids?" Maybe because everyone's working to death. That's what's happening right now. Um, working to affinity. So, um, and when people have money, they don't want to have kids anyway. So, um, so there's a whole complex thing that's happening. Yeah, a lot of them are so burnt out that when they finally get above ground, they want to uh, be able to breathe for a few minutes and enjoy some of the spoils of their work. So this is crazy to me. Um, so concentration of black workers. So we break down the state. Um, it was crazy to me that District of Columbia, which has been struggling to be seen as a state, um, somehow has like the highest share of people earning less than 50 and the poverty rate is very high around the white house around the white house not in the white house but around the white house when it comes to percentage of the population even though it's only 156,000 people working on it somehow it has the highest percentage of people earning it. And then you have number two because somebody needs to get these uh, bloated politicians their lattes I mean, these stats are terrible right here. You have New York, you have New York, with thirty-four percent of people earning less than fifteen dollars an hour. Um, it gets worse. You have some states where more than half the state is earning less than fifteen dollars. Like Mississippi, more than half the state the workforce is earning less than fifteen dollars an hour. Sixty-three <laughs> percent of the state is earning less than fifteen dollars. That that is. Why are we not flying in jets and dropping off pennies for those people right now? Um, because they need to work harder. We need, we need UNICEF in there right now, for real. And Puerto Rico is 92%. And this is just like people on the books, because most people just getting cash and working off the books. That's why this number is like fucking just 1,000 people. That's that's a scam number right there. It's like they, can, they don't even have enough money to give Uncle Sam any. They're like, <laughs> yeah, we're starving out here. <laughs> So this stat is crazy to me. You have these state South Carolina. And that, and, and the thing Kentucky. is, like, you know, the thing that really kills me, you know, the news have been talking all this time about how, you know, these poor people, you know, they're they're shoplifting. This this epidemic of shoplifting. Right. When you look when you look at what happened with the gas prices. Right. What are they talking about now? Is it like. The guy that is making seven twenty five an hour stealing gasoline? No, because they don't have a car. <sighs> right? Now you're talking about people who thought that they were better than the sub fifteen dollar an hour people. Oh, look, I've got a car. You need to you just need to be better. And then when the gas prices go up by two dollars a gallon, the, the the tank the the cost to fill up their tank goes up by thirty or forty dollars, and they're stealing gasoline from the gas stations. They're poking holes in gas tanks on the street to steal their gasoline. I mean, wasn't there like a stat, like a huge stat? I heard. A, I'm gonna pull this up, but it pretty much just said that a huge number of the populations is one 
paycheck away from this being like fucking a crazy man in the subway throwing poop yeah. at people. They said um, like uh, 60% of Americans cannot afford a, uh, was it like a 400 or $600 oh, yeah, uh, yeah. emergency? Yeah, and this and the gas thing is, is kind of like the emergency, right? Yeah. That's the emergency right That's now. What, it's that, is that plus yeah. inflation of all the other stuff adding all the way up and they can't make the ends meet. So let me put that up and make sure. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, average American. Yeah, so I'm going to pull up not this like BillyBob.com who says it. So <laughs> Billy Bob Thornton was a good actor, you know? So BillyBobBlog.com. So you're right. It says here, it says right here, this is from 2019, which is like, I like how, I like, I like looking at stuff before the pandemic because see, this is what CNBC said before the pandemic. And all of a sudden, yeah, this is before the Rona, folks. Then before a, people were like tearing their heads off of bats and drinking them. <laughs> so many Americans can't afford four hundred dollar emergency blame debt. Four hundred dollars. Some forty percent of Americans who struggle to come up four four hundred dollars. And it's like, why are people so poor? Look at this dumbass question. I'm not even gonna like show you the. <laughs> if you don't know that answer, then you just how get- many? Uh, just so, uh, just how so? How are so many Americans short on cash because five people hoarded all of it? If you if you don't know the they've answer, got the all the cash. You deserve to get robbed at the ATM machine because you're not paying attention. So um yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, if, you, I mean if, you're, if you're sleeping at the keyboard, you, you know, they're catching you sleeping on the street. <laughs> you are sleeping right now. Sometimes so. I think they're intentionally daft. These are intelligent people making decent livings, and they just can't. How is it possible anybody can be impoverished? How? I mean, look at the job I have. Well, you have the job. They don't. If they had the job, you would be the one robbing somebody. Sheesh. So that's a dash and bash. Um, Dirt World Edition, because we're getting reports from, <laughs> from like, fucking organizations that do reports on Dirt World problems and shit, and they're, they're focused on the United States. People don't uh, no, so that's this is Black Power Magic Hour. You can follow us on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, and Act TV. Um, we're live on Facebook, I think. And then Dr. Virginia, he's talking shit and he's live on a whole bunch of platforms like Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, Discord. And that's Dash and Bash. Why are people poor edition? <laughs>